in the big bilge tank. We'll keep you in the know. In the big bilge tank, we'll fix your techie woes. Then we'll break the tub, we'll bake you till we're all together raking, and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bilge tank. In the big bilge tank, come and join our fire crew. In the big bilge tank, we will show you what to do. We'll hack it till we crack it, and we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Hello and welcome to episode 031 of the Bilge Tank. I'm Hi. here with Phil and Paul. Hello. And we're going to solder some things today. The what? stage is looking a little crowded. <laughs> yeah, we're it's looking like a fire hazard. <coughs> Basically got a mess. So a yeah. few few weeks ago now, months even, we did some through-hole soldering. We uh, oh, we did a we did fats. Zero it wasn't that long yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. 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 video of that. I use it to kind of reference to people saying, here's, here's how to solder. And yeah, most people were like, yay, soldering. And it was kind of helpful. But some people were like, pa, too simple. <laughs> you fools. Too easy. You fools. Yeah. So yes. today we're back with some more advanced soldering techniques. Um, yeah, we're going to look at some surface mounts. We're going to look at some BGA stuff as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying it'll go well because live <laughs> demos and all that, but yeah. we're going to show you some of the techniques. Yeah. Um, to start with, if you are looking for more practice on your soldering and your artistic stuff, then Club Boldport, which is run by Sar Dreamer. How do I bring up Camp 3? There you go. Okay. Um, it has a monthly club, which is about 16 quid, I think, thereabouts, a bit less, I think. And you get a monthly project from his uh, kind of greatest artistic PCB hits. Yeah. And the first one's just delivered to make yourself a little cord wood puzzle and things. And yeah, they're going to st- keep coming out, and they're a great way to learn solder through all style. The interesting thing with um, SARS kits, it's not like your classic dice roll kit, LED Christmas tree kit, or whatever you get in oh, gosh, uh, no. normal places. It's all about the art of it. Yeah. So the the purpose is kind of almost as important as the art is as, as important as yes. the purpose. I'm Looking at my process. Stop going bing now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Um, yeah. But he has he puts a lot of uh, a lot of love and effort <coughs> into these. Yeah. And they're really cute. So Shall there's some through hole stuff and art and all that. And get it on camera. Can we, we can get it on camera? Think. There's so much can. stuff in the way. Hey. There we go. Firm hey. image on camera. This is, the packaging is utterly crazy, yeah, which is why we love SAR. Um, it's kind of like this corrugated uh, sandwich, I guess, that you rip the front off, um, but very, very cute. And then inside you've got all the bits and pieces you need to build the project. And what does this one do? I don't know. <laughs> we should this totally is, get around to building that. Um, don't, don't get dragged down by tawdry things like function <laughs> job. This is a uh, voltage to... Sound converter, I believe. Oh, so it's almost like a, a but it's voltage to pitch or tone converter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so for those of you that are uh, chip made by <coughs> very good at listening to sounds, it could be a multimeter. Maybe G, G had it set up to make squeaky, crazy noises as you moved your hand. G um, has everything set G up to make crazy, squeaky noises. That's theremin. Everything is theremin. Everything is theremin. Everything. Yeah. Is um, theremin. But yeah, very cool. We love Volport Club. Mm-hmm. It's super awesome. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to go through some of the new products first or straight into the solar? Uh, let's, do, let's do products at the end. We can't put yeah. this off. And <coughs> so we talked about through hole. That's where the legs of the pro- that's where the legs of the components kind of go through holes. Like LEDs, they've got legs, they go through holes. It's just like there in the it's name. Literally it through is, right yeah. there. So you have big big long pointy legs that go through the PCB and you usually solder them to the underside and then mm-hmm. clip the legs off um, to whatever length you need it to be. Yeah. And it's uh, it's normally normally it's the way you hobbyists do things with breadboards. Converse from the breadboard to a soldering iron like our hacko over the end here. Um, yeah, but you can do things like surface mount yourself, and surface mount is the way we make most of our stuff. Um, you get resistors and, c- and capacitors in small square packages, and you solder How them to the board. How we just show them off on a camera? Yeah, um, yeah I mean oh, the I'm thing is that here. through hole. It's like 1980s, early 1990s technology. Most things were through-hole components. Uh, yeah. And then very, very quickly it all became surface mount because it's a lot cheaper to manufacture. It's a lot quicker to manufacture. Mm-hmm. You can actually get pick and place for through-hole components. A lot of power supplies are still completely through hole There's be single board, uh, even cardboard um, PCBs, yeah. single-sided. Uh-huh. And they often use through-hole components. And you have these machines that like take ammo reels of the components. So they'd be take, there'd be like yeah, a, a row bandolier. of resistors, bandolier style, yeah. <laughs> uh, feed it into the machine and it would actually cut the legs, form the component, so bend the legs round and put them through the holes. Wow. Um, and then it could be presumably wave soldered or whatever afterwards, but it's quite yeah. incredible. 
So we're going to have a let's have a little go at surface mount soldering now. Okay. <laughs> well, this first of all, this is a kit that we just put in stock. Uh, this oh, is the advanced one. That's that's we haven't got to that yet. Oh, what, um, what are we looking right. at then? What are we with? <clears throat> so what we've got here is we've got a little breakout board from uh, oh, Adafruit. Yeah. Let's stick that up on the big camera. So these are dead handy. These days it's quite hard to get a lot of parts in through-hole formats. Mm -hmm. So uh, especially things like microcontrollers or um, ARM processors, they will almost always be S&D only, and sometimes yeah. BGA, which is the is the hard as nails part. Um, but that basically means that the component sits on the surface uh, and there's kind of little copper pads or, well, enic coated hassle-coated, whatever, pads that line up with the pins on the component. And essentially, you coat those pads with a bit of solder paste, put the component on top, and then just bake the whole board. And that, yeah. that reflows the solder, makes yeah. the joint. Basically, normally we'd throw it for a reflow oven where it, it slowly warms it up, then actually blasts it with heat and allows it to slowly cool down. Yeah, on a big um, conveyor belt, it kind of yeah, travels yeah. through. Whereas but today, <laughs> but today, today we're going to that the hobbyist way of doing it, I suppose. Yeah, we're yeah. going to have a, we're going to have a crack at soldering. Is that the right try doing it with this? Should we do it with a soldering iron? So what, what we, we have here. So we have some soldering paste in a syringe. Because people aren't going to have a heat gun, are they? No, no we'll do the soldering paste on a syringe and soldering then... Uh, paste and they, they can get a hold of soldering paste in the syringe relatively cheap. So yeah. first of all, when you're what we're using here is an Adafruit uh, SMT breakout board. So they basically put the landing for this particular component on a PCB and then broken out all the pins down the side. So we're essentially going to turn this SMD component into a through-hole component. Yeah. Yeah, Paul Beach. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mr. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. But you need to be really careful with SD components. They have different pitches, they have different packages. Like There's, there's so many variables. They are an absolute um, minefield. You've got to suffer. Just be really certain so make sure that your breakout matches yeah, your components. Good. Or if you're designing your own PCB, really check the data sheet, make sure you know exactly <coughs> what the landing's meant to look like. And <laughs> almost check. always produce your own landing because using stock ones is uh, <laughs> not an exercise in frustration. So basically, going Paul's going to Paul's gonna paste this board up um, and that. Involves using a little syringe full of <laughs> solder paste, which is tiny, tiny be beads of solder that are mm. suspended in gunge, basically. Well, suspended in flux, suspended essentially. In flux. So, do I need to pierce this? Um, and no. it, it, it should just, it should just. Oh, it's going to go. <laughs> is, it, is it an old one? No, it's a brand new one. Brand new. We've got a little pot of paste. We've as got well. knives it's everywhere. So is, is it need a thing or a, a do we want it or who? Uh, I'm just it? being tentative because I don't want to. Let's not be tentative. Yeah, okay. Maybe that does need something. Just warming up a little bit. Let's go for the lag. Oh, no, there we go. Right, right, right. Okay, so what See, we'll I loosened it up for you. So Thanks. Paul's <laughs> going to kind of streak a line of it down across all the pads. Yeah, <laughs> don't try and just put. You're not going to be able to put it on one. Let's, one let's just do one edge on each pad. And then we can come back and add paste to the other edges. <laughs> You're crazy, okay. man. Crazy. I've got a little snake there. Press it, press it directly it. down on the board to snip it off. <laughs> Uh, so my snake's going right. We've got the tweezers. It's all yeah, paste. It's really <laughs> frustrating stuff to work with. It, it won't stick to the board, really, until it's heated up. Okay, mm -hmm. When we do stenciling, it's pushed really, oh, really hard against the board. Perfect. So there we go. One okay. edge done. When you're pasting, it can be a pain oh, in tweezers. the pain. Um With <laughs> solder paste, we're using a syringe here, which is really only for... Um, prototyping. I think that's actually chip quick, which is a very low temperature solder paste, which is designed to help you do rework. Um, mm -hmm. This is what we would use to remove components. And there you go. That, that's a oh, lot of solder. Sausage. I mean, it's, it's going to be fine. We can work with that, but it's quite a lot of solder. Shall we heat this up first and show basically how it blobs onto the pads? No, no. Stick, 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 stick the chip on there. Do you okay. want tweezers? Let's get the chip the right way around. Um, so yeah, you can, go, you can buy solder paste <coughs> syringes. This is great for like home use or for one-offs or if you want to remove a chip. The reason um, this helps you remove chips is it's extremely low temperature. So you basically add it to the solder that's already there. You then heat the combination, and this reduces the melting point of the kind of the overall solder that's being used. Um, so it helps you rework stuff very easily. The other way that you buy solder paste is in pots. So we buy it in pots and keep it. You keep it in a fridge, and you can't take it out, and you um, squeegee it on using a stencil, which yeah. um, is what you do in production. So your stencil size is basically as big as your production size. Hole. You can use the hacko, you know. Use a mini heater. Use a hacko. We love the hacko. Because yeah. that's more. It's so. Okay. Probably goes without saying, but make sure your orientation dot on your chip, which is going to be really hard to focus, matches up with the orientation dot on the board. Come on, I'm focus. Gonna, I'm going to do my camera work, Phil. Focus. While you do this so that we can actually get in on it. Focus. Uh, Sometimes it does. Don't, I mean, no, no, I had a really good question. Stop chasing me. There we go. There we go. 
So the little dot so on the chip. You can see that dot. Stop, going, right? closer. Stop going closer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there we go. That's really it. Hard, there we go. There we go. I think your alignment's a bit off there, Phil. So it's yeah. perfect. I don't know my alignment's a bit off. I'm going to go and tweeze that arm. So. Okay. Oh, can we get, can <laughs> we get rid of us, Paul? <coughs> yeah, um, sure. Yeah. Where are we? Oh, so that's going to be a shot about... Ah! That way. Get that out of the way. way. That way. Down, down. Literally where that is. Down sure. there. Where that is. Perfect. Oh, that's so hard to get your brain orientated to the camera. Okay, so here we go. We'll get the tweezers. And we'll pick up this. If only we hadn't had so much coffee before this. Yeah, you know, right. fighting the tripod at the moment. Let me adjust it properly. There we go. Okay, here we go. And then we're going to just smush the chip right down on top of that paste there. Just spin it around so we can see the pasty edge, Phil. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's nice. Like smush down. That is definitely way too much paste, but with a syringe, it's really, really, really hard to just get a small amount out. Plus, this is quite a coarse pitch component. I this think this is, is 0.5 yeah. millimeter probably. Point six actually paste into place as well. Smush. Take some off if you want as well. Way there. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, just smush some of that out of the way. Probably made a complete mess of it. Yeah. It's all part of the fun, isn't it? Yeah. Mind. Okay. Gun. Zahako. Okay. Where are we? Where are we at? So that's just <laughs> smushed straight down and not focusing again. That's because you moved it too close. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah, it did a really good close-up earlier, it focused sharp as nails, and yeah. then it just doesn't want to now. Hmm. So we're waiting for the soldering iron to heat up, because we're getting there. Smoking like a gun! So do you want to show the tip you've got on that? Oh, this is a really, really, a really fine, fine tip. tip we've got on here at the moment. And it's got a little bit of tinning on it, hasn't it? So it's all ready to go. All ready to go! Okay, so this is just basically drawing it along your pads to try and get that. Oh, look at that. Keep this in place with the tweezers. From the flux, from the paste, solder emerges. Bam, and you'll see the solder actually wick down onto the pads as you solder it. You also see a couple of bridges here. If you still have a look at that It's like one. full of flux, isn't it? And that one, because yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah. You got some excess there. So you can... Sometimes you can get rid of a bridge by just trying again, but. Other times you'll need a little bit of desolder braid to get that excess solder out. In this case, yeah, there's just too much solder there. Mm -hmm. Did we bring any desolder braid? Oh gosh, no. Probably not. We've got the hot air, though. So oh, let's do another edge. Let's do another edge. Pull. So it should be a bit easier now oh, because we can system. apply the paste directly um, to the fixed component. Yeah, so then nothing is flapping in the breeze. Whoa! <laughs> I'm doing good. The back of the syringe fell out. So we're going to paste this next. Let's do the opposite edge, actually. It's a little bit wonky. Are you trying to hide your shame in the background? Hide my shame, yeah. <laughs> How hard must I press? I've got a bit of friction on the pad, so it's a little bit easier to draw the solder across. It might actually try and show what I'm doing. I'm just going to go in there and... Oh, damn it. <laughs> It wants to stick to everything but what you want it to stick to, general rule of thumb. But don't be afraid to kind of smush it around into general place, because as soon as you heat it up, it's going to stick to the pads. <laughs> or so the theory goes. Yeah. And you can always tidy it up later. Yeah, you can um, tidy it up later. Make sure you've got a flux pen, it makes life a lot easier, and some solder wick. Oh, right, uh, which is like a braid, you can use it I to remove it excess myself solder. I'm getting my finger in the way, so this is our new gunky edge down here. Do the same again, draw it slowly across, hitting each of those pins as we go. And oh, that's a decent actually job. Turned out way, way better than the first one. <laughs> Helps to have the chip held in place and have a few more fingers to deal with. Yeah, not so much paste and all that. Show you that edge, but oh, come on. There, there we go. go. That's Beautiful. Believe it or not, there is actually solder there. <laughs> But you don't want it to be bumps of solder, you want it to be just a little bit, so that's perfect, yeah, isn't it, it? Yeah, basically just needs to be like a... <coughs> the, the, the idea of solder needs to be applied to those pins. Yep. <laughs> It'd be interesting to figure out if this works afterwards. But. Yeah. Just not enough hours in the day. Yeah, it's definitely a bit wonky on the other side. Yeah. It should be fine. 
Uh, but yeah, if you want to experiment with SMD components, uh, and that includes things like little voltage regulators uh, and stuff like that, but mostly microcontrollers, then... Yeah, um, practicing good equipment all helps. Yeah, and little breakout boards like this <coughs> are really, really handy, mm. um, especially when you're practicing. Or if you just want to convert something into a format you can use on breadboard. Got yep. It. So there you go, that's SMD soldering in principle. Not that hard, really, Bridget with a bit there. of practice and the right tools. And a camera setup and so years of experience. Soldering will generally work with you, which is a great thing about just soldering things. Is it likes to stick to the metal pads and it likes yeah. to stick to the content. Especially as long as you get those hot. The flux around as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the flux to help the, f the heat go to the right place. So there you've got to level up. You've gone from the through hole to the surface mount. Then you go to soldering you can't see, which is... <laughs> we've got a few of these in from Shenzhen. Um, this is the BGA Reballing Practice Kit. Now, this is made by Dangerous Prototypes, who, which is run basically by Ian, who lives out in Shenzhen. Scary, scary, scary. Um, and they, they, are, they are true blue hackers, makers. They, they, they just live in Shenzhen and do things just for fun, experimentation and discovery. And one of the things they do is, around, around the time the Shenzhen Maker Fair comes around, they organise a workshop. And two years ago, they did one where they actually took a group of about 20 people into what was basically... Um, a kind of middle of China mobile phone repair shop Gone and off. taught you how to uh, replace BGA kits, um, ball grid array BGA. And what that is, is instead of having legs or even any kind of pads on the outside of the component, they're all hidden underneath the chip. Um, I think we've only really done one of these ever. But this kit contains an old Nokia mobile phone to work on and then awesome things like this stencil here. <laughs> so show that. That oh, is a that metal is stencil. A thing of beauty. With the outline of a bunch of uh, popular BGA things. And you can squeeze the solder paste through that onto the chip to reball it and repair a mobile phone. And uh, this is basically how they're working out in Chinese workshops to repair yeah, phones. This is like if someone comes in with a broken iPhone or whatever and mm -hmm. they have a replacement part, they might remove, say, the RAM chip. Yeah, um, and replace it with a, a new part because it's not it's a highly skilled task but it's not expensive to do that repair no. so it's well worth doing it you know you might you might save your phone for $40 instead of buying yeah. a new one so but I think for us over here it's it's more about just the practicing and the hacking just mm -hmm. to show that you can do these things at home with fairly minimal setup and the whole point of BGA is that devices are getting much more complex so they need more interconnects they need more pins they need more power supplies yeah um, and this allows the chips to stay the same size which is very important for mobile devices mm -hmm. while bringing all of those contacts into the die internally yeah um, which you just couldn't do you know this this uh, chip that <coughs> build the soldering I think is that that's 32 pin is it eight has to get pretty big eight on each edge so that's 32 pin chip yeah, um, some of these BGAs will be like two hundred. You know, it's it's insane, really. It's yeah. crazy. Some of them are so popular they already have Chinese names. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. So we're going to have a quick go at maybe desoldering one of these BGA chips. Sandy in the chat is just asking how do they make the stencils? They're um, laser cut from steel, so Generally, it's very yeah. thin steel sheets. Um, we actually make our own stencils for prototypes, which we laser cut through on mylar, which is kind of plastic. Um, but for production use, you really need steel stencils because they the mylar ones wear away after a couple of uses they're not much yeah not much cut although for for emf camp um, <laughs> a couple of years ago we did laser cut mylar stencil that was used for kind of a run of a couple of thousand i think really? a few hundred oh, at least the yeah 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 Crazy. so they, they can work really well um if you're it's when you get down to the really fine pitches the mylar yeah. starts to struggle it, it isn't doesn't it? take yeah. a very good edge that's a, that's that um, but these are incredibly precise like our production stencils downstairs are they go into a tw is it twenty seven inch frame, something like, like a big that. clip frame, yeah. uh, and they just come as a, a sheet of steel <coughs> with the design laser cut out of the centre of it, and they, they look they incredible. Are. They're so yeah, precise. Pretty aggressive thing. Anyway, what we have here is we have a hot air gun. If you've never seen one, this is like the reverse of a solder. Well, kind of the reverse of a soldering iron. You don't make contact with the um, thing that you're soldering. You just blow very hot air at it. <laughs> That's just the bolt coming out at the end of it. Uh huh. <laughs> I you see. might want to remove that actually, it might work Ooh. better. Oh, nuts. <laughs> so, yeah, this so basically it's blows it's hot air to try and heat it. things up to the temperature where the solder just becomes molten and you can pull things off. Well, so the theory goes, anyway. <laughs> yeah. We're going to give it a try. We've got the uh, we've got the heat camera again on this, so we can actually watch what kind of temperature it's getting up to. And, yeah. Untangle this tangly mess. <laughs> Just oh, so we don't can set take the Ethernet cable out right, that won't, that won't ruin your day. 
Dave's going to be ruined. So. so we're actually going to try and take this old Nokia phone and take one of the chips off it, yeah. which could go really well or really badly. Well, if we struggle, we'll just take something smaller off. <coughs> okay, smaller yeah, off. just but, show... I mean, yeah. Or if you turn the, uh, turn the fan up enough, it will just blow them off for you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Oh, what do we got here? It'll blow all the small components oh, up before it blows the big one. Right. Are you doing this, Phil? Are you cameraing or what? Uh, I don't know. You want to do it? You want to do it? <laughs> you do it. Um, this, right. The hot air gun is not just this nozzle that Phil has. It's no. also this massive, great big lump right here. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, Sorry, Al. Which is quite oh, substantial. Man. Yeah. Um, okay. But they're all much of a muchness. They tend to look roughly like How that. How much is a hot air gun in general? I mean, is it something a, a hobbyist could How much are pick they? up? Yeah, one hundred and fifty pounds. You can get a oh, less than that. Yeah, reasonable yeah. one for. This, oh, it's this, not out of the question. This is a map one. Yeah. Yeah. So I go to four now. It'll be, uh, so we should actually see some heat in the thermal camera now. Ah. <laughs> zoom all the way. Um, just get um, oh, oh, oh. So if I come yeah. up to here, you'll see the tip. The, the reading, it's slowly heating up. So this is something like the um, Nokia 3000 series. Real old school tech. But it's still got things like BGA chips. So what we're going to take off, we're going to try and take off. Is that mm -hmm. a shot? Trying, like to a, a, trying to get the phone in shot as well. Yeah. Isn't the phone isn't very hot. hot is the trouble. Let me heat the phone up a little bit so you can see it. Just push it. Yeah. Push the button, John. You can push the button in it will angle it. Oh, can you see the phone now? Oh, push there it. it is. Oh, there we go, man. There see the go. heat taken to the phone. <laughs> so it's not actually a bad idea to heat the whole PCB up if you want to get this kind of thing done because yeah. you'll sometimes get work mats where they're heated from the underside when you need to keep it kind of at a, a high ambient temperature so you have to do less work with hot air gun. Yeah, you don't. The thing with things like hot air is because you don't have that control of the profile, like you're getting recoil of them. You do need to be careful. We're going to try and take this one off and do the right one. You gone, uh, you're going for a whopper there, Phil. Yeah, whichever so um, the So you want to heat it up nicely in the middle and then move to the outsides. Apologies for the noise. Like it. <laughs> I see it's struggling to get kind of two, three hundred degrees C. What is that even reading now? Let me see it. Sold, I mean, the solder should start to reflow. It depends on the solder paste, but it mm -hmm. should start to reflow about to probably 250 ish, maybe a little over. Yeah, it depends, it depends on the paste. That's still stuck pretty fast, though. Yeah. There's a lot of connections to basically get unstuck in here, and it's a lot of chip to kind of get hot at the same time. And the spinning massive well, isn't it? PCB. So it, yeah. it takes a lot of patience. Man, it's like a good hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to do each individual hair. Yeah, <laughs> each individual <laughs> hair. Beautifully dry. Try to a crisp. Do you want to tweeze now? Yeah. So yeah. you can get it some air in. You've got a better <laughs> position for air in. Yeah. I'm sure I trust you to air while I tweet. There we go. Du, 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 du. So how easy is it to overheat and kill the chips? Uh, I think it's fairly hard, depending on what you're setting of your heat gun is. If you set it to like 400 degrees plus and hammer a small chip, it will probably kill it fairly quickly. But if you're gently doing it over time, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to ride the edge. The solder will generally go liquid before the chip fails. <laughs> before yeah. the chip goes liquid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bear in mind the chip had to be heated up to this temperature to get soldered on there in the first place. So. Mm -hmm. But so, the chips will have a very specific kind of definition of what reflow profile yeah, they Yeah, and the number of times you can do it and things of that nature sometimes, don't they? I'll give it, give it, give it a tweak so it'll move. Yes, no, it's a wiggle there. Ooh. We have a wiggle. Oh yeah, that lifted. That lifted. So yeah, generally don't do it with anything you really care about. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't crack open your Galaxy Six. Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That. There, there we go. There we go. Oh. Epic lift. There with we go. The ball. There is the ball grid okay. array. Boom. Woo. I want to heat those up so they reflow nicely. I think we get a good idea of what they look like. There you go. 
Ooh. So part of what you get with this kit as well so that's like is cool you do get a nice sound. list of instructions of how to reboard. It won't be the same as going to the actual class they had, but it'll be pretty close. Ooh. Well, this chip is curvaceous. <laughs> I don't think this is going to work yet. No, no, probably not. I think it's <coughs> a little mask over it or something. It's very odd. Get that in there on this. So this is how hot the chip currently is um, after cooling down for a couple of seconds. If I can get it on the camera, see what it says. Uh, uh, it's not too hot. Less than 90 degrees. So. Oh, it's definitely it's cooled off. Down. It's still not focusing on it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's chill. Mm. Still don't yeah. want to touch it. No, definitely not. So if I bring the chip over um, here. Ooh. Where are we? <laughs> There's the base. Never going to focus. Pull back, pull back, pull back. Pull back. I'm trying to pull back and keep it <laughs> in, in thing at the same time. Focus. Sometimes well. we surprise it. <laughs> Yeah. Pull, what's going on here? It just, can't, focus. it just can't optically focus that close. Okay, pull it back, Phil. You're going to have to go slightly behind the phone. Just the edge of the phone seems to be in focus. Hey! Oh, hey. Yeah. Nailed okay. it! So that's the ball grid on the bottom of this particular chip. Uh, obviously there's some <laughs> excess solder there's that's kind of dangling yeah. off. <coughs> so what we do normally, we take the spatula that's included in the kit here and use that to heat up the solder and scrape off the excess with a flat blade. Is that this spatula oh, ball? Spatula. That's spudger. Yeah. This is the spudger? So you've got a spudger in there, you've got some cotton swabs, and you use some nail polish remover where the chip's cool yeah. to remove all the uh, crud on there, the yeah. bunting crud. And then you put solder paste on it Amazing. using the stencil and reflow it to have new balls. <laughs> new balls. Normally BGA chips arrive with solid solder balls on yeah. the pads themselves. So actually you don't, I don't know whether you add extra paste. We don't you use BGA yeah, you for any of our stuff. Yeah, yeah. You add extra paste then. You don't normally, the for, the, for the rework you do, but right, right. normally you don't. And the kit comes with some really... Horrible lead containing, yeah, it's silicon paste there, uh, silicon, uh, sorry, drop tin it. lead paste. Uh, drop it hot, still. proper stuff. You ready for that? Uh, it's, that's cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 So, yeah, it's an interesting kit. It's not the cheapest, but it's got real shed tone knowledge in there. Yeah, it's something so you just to have a play with, isn't it's it? It's hard to come by it elsewhere. Definitely. Or, or find something to take apart yourself. You know, yeah. if you've got an old phone in a drawer or something, it's a, at this a good point, way to you'd practice. You completely clean all of the solder paste off the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you completely complete it all. Well, you wouldn't. Chip, you, the chip's dead, right? <coughs> well, yeah, new so chip, the chip's dead. You can yeah, it. use the old chip to stand in for a new chip. It's more the techniques and the the fact that you can do BGA stuff at home. And what's this? What's this clamp you've got, Paul? This is very cool. That's the PCB holder. It comes with the kit as well. Oh, does it? As used oh, in sweet. factories in. So this is this is basically like a, a spring-loaded well, clamping everything. system, mm -hmm. which is quite fancy. Yeah, it's set up and it just quite yeah, fierce. good for retaining PCBs. Basically, so we I mean we stopped the pan of ice for quite a while, which is also great for holding onto a PCB while you're working. But yeah. that's uh, a nice little solution. Too. This is the uh, cheaper Chinese version. <laughs> There's <laughs> quicker. Always, cheaper. There's always a cheaper Chinese <laughs> version, right? Yeah, it seems to be pretty good. It, it, yeah, it is it good. Kept it in place. Yep. Oh, this is the dirtiest, horrible, most horrible oh, phone I've ever that seen. That screen's probably usable, you know. Probably. Yeah. Let me get that up and running. And Plus some really cool. vintage Nokia there. So what do you actually get in this kit then, Paul? You get soldering paste, you so get... Oh, so we've got camera section. Camera section. Also, that's still slightly warm. There you go. Show that on the camera. You can have a read of it. It's on the website. It's in the new product section. So flux, solder paste, spudges for opening. Um, oh, yeah. Mobile phone. Tools, tweezers, uh, pentalobe screwdriver for Which opening Which tweezers came with this? Both, they, both of these? Yeah. And they're pretty oh, handy. Oh, they're very well, um, very well aligned as well. That's yeah, good. apparently they're strong as well. So if you are in the habit of stabbing things with tweezers, <laughs> they're the ones to go for. Well, the wor literally the worst thing <coughs> is cheap tweezers where the alignment's poor yeah. on the tips because they're li literally just spraying <laughs> stuff off all over the place. Yeah, so we've got some cotton birds. Good. We've got, so this is called soldering paste, but it's actually Ancient. flux. And that helps your solder flow over the pads nicely. And then you've got a little tin of actual solder paste, um, mechanic solder paste, which you can use probably a bit easier than the um, than the old syringe. You can use that in the okay. tweezers or a cloth to dry it out and wipe it through the stencil. Very cool. So they, they explain all this in the handy double-sided A4 instructions. Yay. With a bit of practice. This certainly turned into a sales pitch, but <laughs> it's well, kind of fun taking things off old phones. It we, is. It we is. have exterior motives sometimes. And the plectrum. Is, yeah. For guitar practice. That come with it. The plectrum actually works. Spudging the case uh, apart. I actually broke the official spudger. Oh. 
the plectrum was actually a lot more hardy. So good old plectrum. <coughs> tough plectrum. Very tough plectrum. Mm. Very wow. So there you go. Um, awesome yeah. stuff. An experiment that actually works. <laughs> the case of this thing is space. disgusting. <laughs> it I is really gross. I think it's come out of a oh. ditch. Yeah. It pretty much has <laughs> got chicken feathers and things in it. Oh, <laughs> oh shit, you not. Nasty. That's cool. Um, sweet. Right, so there's our adventures in kind of PGA <laughs> desoldering, if not yeah, soldering. Let's get all of the oh, stuff um, and I think all we've got is some new product stuff shall we, shall we, um, this week. Oh, you actually have a working Which demo. Cool. We have, but I was going to do these first. You, you do We're going to save the best to last, Phil. Oh, mm-hmm. What is it? Tower lights. Oh, these are awesome. Um, they're basically um, kind of industrial indicators for machinery, so you can you can mount them on a wall and have them pointing up, which is kind of cool. Uh, they've got three, well they're not actually three LEDs, they're um, little clusters of LEDs to, to get the light out of all sides. Do you want to crack um, it open? We can crack it open. Yeah. The, the main downside, I guess, to this is the fact it's 12 volt, which is a bit of a pain for something. It's not hard yeah. to deal with, but you could go in and change the LEDs out, I guess, if you wanted for something else, um, kind of use the chassis. The, ocean. Um, the other thing is that they have a buzzer in here, so you can use it as like an alert indicator. Definitely going to set some of these up around the workshop because it's very, very cool. Yep. This is not the way you meant to unscrew it, and it's like a screwdriver for the top. But you, you, you can get there. There we go. There we go. Brilliant. What kind the buzzer? It's going to be. Uh, buzzer's orange. Uh, orange. So, brown and orange. Should be able to get something. Orange. So, you have um, basically these three sets of LEDs, one for each segment in the stack. Uh, it's really ghetto construction because it's like a flex PCB wrapped around a post uh, cable tied on, but it works really well. So yeah, it's quite nice. Is it just one flex PCB as well? Uh, yeah, it's just one big flex PCB wow. wrapped around and then a little FPC cable onto the control board, <coughs> <coughs> which will be some kind of really constant stupid. current driver. I guess so. Yeah. It lo- in fact, it looks more basic than that to be honest. Wow. It may just be a regulator. Hmm. Um, I've forgotten whether yeah, I think it's probably just a regulator. The inside or the outside, but. But that yeah. works, yeah. It works very cool. We had it turned on earlier and it was uh, kind of fun. We haven't unfortunately got a 12 volt power supply in here, so we can't do anything with it. But yeah, we'll have one up and running in the workshop and we'll Definitely. periscope around that, I'm sure. Um, and they're available on the shop now. They're in the new products section. Uh, and there is, there's this version, which is the three color version, red, amber, green. Uh, there's also a shorter version that's just the red light and the buzzer. Mm. Um, so that's kind of cool. If you just want something to yeah, a fail. So something's gone wrong. Fail warning. Yeah. Um, and the other thing we've buzz. got in this week, which we're very excited about, is Adafruit's new little Charlie Plexed matrices, mm-hmm. which are kind of awesome. Let me see if I can get a demo running. Um, I've managed to somehow partially destroy this one, but. <laughs> hey, you get our, our so, what connections have you got here? Uh, on the Adafruit thing, or oh, on the. Uh, on the Charlie Plex? Uh, it's I squared C. So it's it's okay. uh, a chip that's very similar to the one that we use for Flotilla and Scrollfat, in fact. Okay. Uh, it's in the same kind of line of um, LED drivers. What's the AUD pin? AUD. Uh, audio. <coughs> it uh, modulates the brightness with an uh, audio okay. signal, which is kind of crazy. So here you've got a Python using... Wow. So the, the, this mess at the top is my fault. But basically, this is almost this is like a plasma style demo effect almost. It might, might help if you try and shield the <laughs> thing. I don't know. Uh, it's a bit hard to see. It's quite bright. It's quite hard to see. It. Yeah. But Do basically, we... the thing that's very cool about this is it's 144 LEDs for the matrix. It's super tiny, so like nice and dense. But the driver backpack um, lets you fully PWM every LED individually. So at the moment we've got scroll fat where all the LEDs are either on off or a set brightness and they've got to be all the same brightness? Yeah, the brightness is across the panel basically and then yeah, each LED yeah. is uh, set to on or off. On or off. Whereas this, you can have like 255 values, less? Uh, 256, yeah. 256 one, one values. Per pixel. There you go. Um, but this is quite unique. There are very few um, kind of LED matrix products that have full PWM because it's you know, much it's more so complex. Dense as well. It's so dense. very dense. I mean, it's super tiny. Look at it next to Phil's giant thumb. Giant thumb. Giant thumb. Here's my um, giant thumb. Here's the board. So there's actually wow. two, there's two products there, isn't it? Yes. You've got the, the actual LEDs, 
and then the and driver the backpack, backpack, which is soldered on here, sold uh, separately. The LEDs sold come separate. in several different colors, don't they? So you have the um, vaporizer, but they're always yeah. one color. Um, yeah, basically this is the range. So you can you can buy the LED plate in either red, yellow, green, blue, or white, and then the controller <coughs> backpack. I mean, the backpack's optional. You can drive this directly. I mean, it's just basically a Charlieplexed grid would, of LEDs. It will be the backpack makes it super simple. Directly, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a lot of pins. Um, so very table. very reasonable price. Oh, and they're super cheap as well. Yeah, like we were talking benefiting, about benefiting. Yeah, benefiting from Adafruit's fruits kind of massive chip chuckers they have now. Yeah, yeah. They have like two massive uh, pick and place machines that are. Really, quite beautiful and stellar. They are, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, just putting 144 LEDs on a board is, you know, takes takes time. It will be far too um, slow for us to produce something like this. But their equipment so much quicker. Yep. Um, that they can do it. Yeah, and yeah, it's, it's nice and cheap. You know, six quid plus six quid. Incredible. It's it's not bad. I definitely see badges being done in this this year. You know, yep. like. Um, Make fair badges and you just called all it for the season, didn't you? I did. The season's yeah. hot badge season's item hot badge. is Adafruit's Charlie Plex Matrix, Lovely. especially because of the PWM. I mean, that is almost unique. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it that has the full PWM yeah. brightness per pixel. It's the uh, same. It's the same uh, chip family as the scroll fat, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Very very similar. Yeah. And you're working on something with this, aren't you? We're not doing anything with it at the moment, but it's uh, it's a very interesting be, part. Yeah. We, we have. You've had your eye. We on always it. have things. That we're thinking about. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool. And then last up, we have one of ours, a new fat at last. Uh, so this is Unicorn Fat, which Phil is demoing, my glamorous assistant. <laughs> Should we go to close up? Will that get go. the colours better, do you think? Probably, yeah. Hey, there okay. we go. I've turned the brightness down way down on this so we could get photos on it. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Um, so this is very similar to our unicorn hat, but it's 4x8 to fit in the fat format. We're using the SK6218 LEDs, which are compatible with WS2812s, mm -hmm. but they're 35 by 35 mm, uh, 3.5 by 3.5 millimeters. So they're a smaller package, um, still super, super bright, and still dead easy to work with. I mean, you use the same library we use for unicorn hat. All you need to yep. do is tell the library you've got fat connected and you're good to go. Cool. Can even run half of all the unicorn hat library. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get half a clock, <coughs> half a rainbow. Yeah, that's a beaut. Nice for indicators, maybe a little VU, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, just cool and cheap, you know. It's yeah, what have we got on ten pounds? Ten. Yeah, sold your own header. This will be the rainbowy badge item. Yes, totally. <laughs> Rainbows all the way. Um, yeah, that's basically it. We have. Yeah, don't forget it's April Fools tomorrow. Do not be fooled. <laughs> yeah. Do we have anything <coughs> planned this year? I don't think we do, do we? No. I don't know. We'll see. We're we doing the spring clean sale. We are. We are bringing back Amory's big, big spring clean, um, which sounds horribly sexist, but it's not. Amory just likes tidying things up around here. So yep. uh, uh, yeah, we're going to do. We're going to do a sale at some point soon. Uh, Oh, I don't know, in a, within the week or so, which is just going to be some stuff we might want to end of line, like when we're carrying it again, or um, stuff that we're overstocked on, whatever. We, yeah. we'll, we'll well, get some, some good stuff Some on stuff there. we just want to get out there. And yeah, just some good stuff. We, as like, well, we yeah. like to be a bit generous yeah, about this. Because um, we hate sales where it's just no stuff you want to buy. Nobody likes that. <laughs> we want stuff you actually want to buy. Stuff we want Definitely. To yeah. No, it'll be it'll be, it'll have some good stuff in it, but it's just yeah. it's just trying to get some space around here because after Christmas, oh my, it's, it's pretty crowded. Just look at boxes and say, why did we get this? Yeah. What's that again? What, what's, what is yeah. that? Um, yeah, the only other thing we've got that's new that people were specifically asking about is the new Feather M0 um, baseboard, which has the uh, Atmel Wi-Fi on it. So that's kind of cool. Okay. It also has a UFL connector, so you can stick your own antenna on there yeah. Uh, yeah. for range and stuff. Have we got the y said one yet? Uh, I don't know. That's the Broadcom thing, isn't it? No, I don't think so. <coughs> we basically bring them in as quickly as we can get hold of them, but Adafruit are out of stock often. <coughs> so. Yeah, generally you ask us about stuff from Adafruit, we'll start getting it in. Yeah. Yeah. Any chance of a show covering basic oscilloscope usage? I reckon we could do that, Mr. Tom Kirby Green. Yeah. yeah. Um, as soon as we learn how to uh, <laughs> learn how to use oscilloscopes. And learn how to yeah. camera. Well, we can, <laughs> we can camera, show yeah. basic oscilloscope usage. I think there's probably yeah. a, a market for like the... The blind leading the blind kind of really simple yeah. stuff. Because well, we do know how to use um, <coughs> oscilloscopes. It's we, just <laughs> doing do. it on camera with a plum. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. If you want to really know how to use an oscilloscope, <coughs> go and follow Dave Jones yeah. and uh, watch some of his videos. But we, we could do a nice little intro, I think. 
um, just going through I think through there's always the functions. simple things and the gotchas that some more advanced videos may not touch upon, but who mm-hmm. yeah. knows. Tom Kirby Green's almost asking, how much trouble will I get in if I ask about Flotilla general availability? Yeah, All Flotilla, yeah. Um, we were supposed to do an update on Friday. You forgot it was Easter weekend because we don't know what day it is. So we'll try and do that again tomorrow with an update on how close we are to releasing ShipShape and getting on with the cookbook software um, just so we can fulfil the Kickstarter promises and then get on to the general availability. Yeah, basically from a hardware point of view, all of Kickstarter, bar like some last late surveys that are coming in now, are done. So the actual hardware fulfilment's finished. Yeah. But we're not happy that the software's quite there to go to retail yet. So yeah. we're just doing some finishing bit to touches be. to it um, to make it perfect, add some more examples, and then um, we'll put it up for retail. Yeah. And then we work on things like the Internet of Things stuff and all that. All mm-hmm. the bells and whistles that make it and just beautiful. Shenanigans. Yeah, Indeed. shenanigans. Right. Okay, so hang in there, Tom. Soon. Soon. Ish. No promises. S- Don't ask for a date. Please stop asking. <laughs> <laughs> We're so busy and tired. Um, okay. Yeah, but tune in next week where we'll have a nice binary multiple, 032. Ooh, Ooh. 032. So we'll Exciting. have to do something entirely pedestrian for that. Mm. Ooh, glad to hear it, Bob. A lot. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Brilliant. Has done something with SDR, RTL SDR. Yeah, doing plane detection. Looks like ADSB with the Pi Zero. Flashing yeah. RTL SDR based plane detecting, detecting Pi. That's sweet. Yeah, very cool. Most welcome. Right. Don't forget to subscribe. Now over eight hundred subscribers. Thank Ooh. you. Let's get to that thousand. Oh yeah. Oh, and then nice. we can actually start getting more viewers yeah. here. Um, um, you, you started it though. Thank you, our viewers, right now. And, and like. And comment <laughs> on nicely. <this> video. <laughs> yes, play nicely. <laughs> nicely. Yeah. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye.